ability in the subliminal messages trial in Reno, Nevada to make a video for the group's upcoming album, Painkiller. We traipsed along after them and brought back this report. Lately, when we've seen Judas Priest, they've been wearing suits and ties and sitting in the courtroom. But last week, they were back in leather and shooting a new video, Painkiller, the title cut from their forthcoming album. Well, this video is set in the bowels of Scattergood Power Station, which is on the Pacific coast of California. We did, uh, what was that song? Another thing come in, a big power station. Now, we, that was an English power station just outside of London. Now we've sought out the biggest American power station that we could possibly get our hands on, and we're just utilizing it to death. The video is directed by Wayne Isom, who most recently shot John Bon Jovi's epic, Blaze of Glory. Although the band's courtroom drama may have been a time killer, they say it didn't affect the music they made on Painkiller. We made this album long before we even went out to Reno, and uh, we simply went into the studio in France and in Holland, and we made a killer metal album, the best one we've ever made to date, and we're really excited about it. But now, the band are sweating it out on a video set instead of sweating it out in a Nevada courtroom. Despite the legal drama, Judas Priest say that some aspects of the experience proved quite educational. I mean, we learned a lot of big words, though. <laughs> we we're gonna, you know. Uh, what was it? Uh, <laughs> pre, pre, pre cognitive, pre, 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 pre cognitive subconscious or something. It's superliminal. That's so. mean. Like we're being superliminal now, as opposed to subliminal. Yeah. But I just got to tell you, the other thing was, we got to laugh about it. You got to laugh about this. The prosecution said that if if you play a record, if you play a record this is forward, good, this is good. This is right. if you listen to a lyric <laughs> forward, your, your subconscious, subconscious mind, mind plays it backwards, and while you're listening to it forwards and comprehends, and comprehends a message. Can you believe that? In October, Judas Priest will kick off their first tour in two years with Megadeth and Testament opening. Rob Halford says, "Watch out for those costumes." I'm wearing this one outfit this year that's like primo. It's like I'm a walking scrapyard. It's just like the <laughs> ultimate costume I've ever had created. And if you miss out on this, you know, bad luck, guys. Painkiller, an album that's Cebu yeah. album, the group's first in two years, and a very topical new single called Holy War. In Los Angeles on Monday, we pulled frontman Dave Mustaine off his Harley long enough to flesh out the following update. Megadeth's latest video, Holy Wars, is literally as fresh as today's headlines. It must be the first video to deal directly with the Middle East crisis. But band leader Dave Mustaine says Holy Wars was originally inspired not by the Middle East, but by a visit to Northern Ireland, where some onstage comments led to Dave Mustaine nearly being killed. I said, you know, this next song's... Uh it's for the cause. Give Ireland back to the Irish. Anarchy in, in Ireland. And I'm dodging pounds. If I would have known what they were worth, I would have caught them. You know, I caught one with my skull, but... I said, you know, so what's the IRA all about? And they go, well, it's about, you know, the Catholics and the Protestants have this feud going on, like the Hatfields and the McCoys, you know? And I'm going like, you know, that's not hip. That prejudiced religion is like, you know, it's a sin in itself. The band's lineup is nearly as volatile as the politics they sing about. Mustaine and bassist Dave Ellison have gone through half a dozen guitarists and drummers in just a few years. The latest recruits are guitarist Marty Friedman and drummer Nick Menza. Mustaine bluntly explained how their predecessors came to be former Megadethers. The drummer I really liked a lot, but you know, he wouldn't listen to any direction and take advice, and now he's got a kid and no gig, so you figured it out. You know, and, and um, the other guy had the audacity to think he could, you know, nail my old lady at the time. I had this fiance for six years, and, and you know, I, I don't know if he thinks that, you know, he's better endowed than I am. You see, sex is never too far from Dave Mustaine's mind. When I write music, I think about, like, sex, you know, and violence. 
Mm. It's kind of clockwork orange, but you know, it, it works. Mm. You know, you start off with a little foreplay, you get into the, the real heavy, serious sweating, and then at the end you clean yourself off and it's over. Mustaine says he prefers sex and violence to Satanism, which he says he investigated in the early 1980s when he was one of the founding members of Metallica. This is a, one of the things that kind of like made me kind of um, veer away from it. It's like I heard that you had to consecrate your your marriage to the underworld by having sex with uh, a satanic priest. And I said, I don't care. No matter how bad I want to be evil, no one's mounting this kid. <laughs> Still pure after all these years. You can catch Megadeth on tour with Judas.